Elon Musk, uh, the it looks like the buyout of Twitter is going to go through, and Elon appears to be thinking about taking an axe to it and uh, hacking off a lot of the diversity and inclus inclusivity nonsense that's embedded in the company. The parasites. Yeah, and that seems like a very good idea. But before we begin, I want to uh, talk about Elon Musk himself for a moment, because he appears to be doing something that I think uh, is interesting and relevant to the current situation. So David Hume apparently spoke to Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and in this conversation, as I document and talk about in uh, this premium podcast, The Secrets of Rousseau, he apparently revealed his secret to him, and Edmund Burke learned this from Hume, allegedly, that Rousseau had worked out what the secret of uh, capturing the public's attention was. And it seems that Elon Musk has actually stumbled onto this himself. It is to bring people wonders, marvels, and all of these impressive things that make them go, ooh, ah, you know. Uh, and you can see that Elon, his entire career basically follows this. You know, things like SpaceX, even among, even around like the Cybertruck, right? It's such a non-issue. And yet Elon Musk was like, wow, look at this futuristic site. And it's like, yeah, I guess. But like, you can see how as a showman, he has to do this to capture people's attention, and he does it really well. Uh, and I think this is kind of the art of uh, of spell casting, putting into people's minds, look, there's going to be something magic happening here. Uh, and so if you want to know more about that, you can go and check that out on the website. But anyway, uh, you can see the effects of this, right? And I and I'm, I really do mean it, where it's like, it is like spell casting, because it's like casting an illusion over men's minds to make them behave in ways they otherwise wouldn't. And you can see this from the actual concrete results. For example, uh, interest at Twitter has skyrocketed from people who wish to go to Twitter and work there. Now, I can't imagine that before Elon Musk, that was something that Twitter was too, uh, too inundated with. It's like, you know, any, the, the best and brightest saying, oh, if I'm going to work anywhere, it's going to be at Twitter. I want to work at the sensor machine. Exactly. But now things are different. And so Elon tweets out this article that we'll go through in a minute by Fortune uh, with, with this attached. He says, if Twitter acquisition completes, the company will be super focused on hardcore software engineering, design, infosec, and server hardware. I strongly believe that all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent. Managers in software must write great, great software, or it's like being a cavalry captain who can't ride a horse. Also, work ethic expectations would be extreme, but much less than I demand of myself. And you can see that this is him casting the spell. So, well, look, we're actually going to go here and do something amazing. Don't you want to be a part of it? And so, as uh, Fortune report, uh, interest in, job interest in Twitter has skyrocketed 250%, or well, no, sorry, 263%. Uh, since uh, Elon basically made all these announcements. And isn't that interesting? Uh, interestingly enough as well, is that the general public seems to be in favor of Elon Musk taking over Twitter, which I didn't know. I wouldn't have thought the general public would have had an opinion on it. But uh, uh, they say, while countless Musk fans... What's a Musk fan called? Muscovite? I don't know. Musketeer. <laughs> Musketeers? <laughs> I don't know. We need, they need a name for themselves, I think. Uh, well, but anyway, while countless Musk fans and a slight majority of Americans, 59% approve of the takeover, according to a recent Harris poll, uh, some current Twitter staff worry it will dramatically change the company's culture and overall direction. Uh, yeah, that's oh, the no. point. Yeah. Like, they explicitly stated that was the point, which is yes. that this is a complete run. I also, his point about if you're going to have technical managers, they need to be technically excellent. Yep. It's also just a great company running point. I've seen this repeated about game companies before, yep. where they have those CEOs who turn up who have never worked in the video games industry and have like sold Pepsi. Yep. And then they just turn up and they're like, yeah, I know what a uh, video game is. I swear. Yep. And you, it's ridiculous. You you get this in uh, like films and comic books as well. I mean, look at the people who are making, who are the you know the executive producers of these things. A lot of the time, they're not people who have been involved in this industry at all. And Elon Musk is on the right track here. And so he presented uh, a, a what do they call it an investment deck or something like that. Sorry, let me uh, find the exact word: a pitch deck to uh, the investors. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, in fact, right. So before we go on to that, though, I had no idea that Twitter had 7,500 employees. What the hell are they all doing? Does that include the censorship staff? Or that, not? That's in total. So that includes the censorship staff. Well, they may have that as an outsource thing. Yeah. Like I mentioned previously with Facebook, they had loads more employees who are just a third company that does the censorship. Yeah. And their well, boys actually well, write it. That, that I don't know if that includes, because, uh, yeah, as I say, it's like uh, third companies who are contracted to do that. I don't know whether it includes that. 
But look at that. In 2018, it was under 4,000. And in 2021, it's 7,500. It's like, what the hell are they doing? And I can only assume it is uh, sort of the HR department of Twitter growing to a monstrous scale. I mean, we had that segment we covered a guy from Google who mm. said pretty much this, which is yeah. we're hiring so many people and none of them know how to code. They yeah. couldn't build the thing they're sat on. Well, that's the thing. How many, how many engineers would you need to actually run Twitter? 50 at the most? You know, 500 engineers? I mean, there's a thousand engineers managing Twitter. You've still got seven, six and a half thousand people left. I mean, even if you take into account work. you've got to do it in most languages on Earth, mm. like, sure, that's a problem, but to hire an extra 2,000 people in a single year between 2020 and 2021... Can't help but feel they're not really needed. Yeah. Anyway, so Elon plans to basically fire a 1,000 people on his first day, which is a good start, but there's probably a few others he needs to. But the thing is, as according to this pitch deck that the New York Times had seen, that he presented to investors, so um, it's not BlackRock, what was the other one? I can't remember the uh, the other investment group. We covered it the other day. Um, but he's planning to fire a 1,000 staff as soon as he gets in there. So it's no wonder the staff are like, oh, worried about our jobs. It's like, yeah, you're in the diversity department, aren't you? You know, you're in the censorship department. No wonder you're afraid. Uh, but anyway, they, the Daily Mail reports, uh, it will be is believed that he will fire many of the firm's woke staff uh, following the transfer of ownership. Uh, and then within the next three years, he anticipates making thousands of new hires, swelling the ranks up to 11,000 employees. To replace the rest of them and need to be cut. That's what that is. Well, I mean, there's replacing them, but there's nearly doubling the size of the company. Yeah, because I don't think he trusts the rest of those 7,000 people either. And uh, if they Ooh, want to leave... That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Or anything else, that's Phase not a problem. them out. Like, we've already got replacement, mate. Don't worry. Bye-bye. Mm. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. No, it's uh, it's uh, the thing I had in mind where I said about, mm. you know, the problem is purging too many people yeah, because yeah, you want yeah. them to yeah, sit around yeah, to yeah. make sure the system changes and then, you know, once you need to get rid of them, that's not a problem. It's mm. easily done. Good point. Uh, they think that much of the new talent will likely be in the field of engineering, of course, and it would be nice to see Elon Musk do something interesting with Twitter, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, they, they reckon that most of the jobs shelved would occur, occur during the takeover period, according to this pitch deck. And uh, on a company level, he has floated the idea of closing down the San Francisco headquarters in order to save money. And that surely is not the only reason he wants to close the San Francisco headquarters. It also smells of poop. Yeah. <laughs> it's also populated by leftists. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't hire someone from San Francisco who's not going to be woke, can you? Um, but uh, And he also wants to propose that the board members may not receive a salary which is another $3 million a year shaved off the expenses, which is all good. Uh, and he, these changes are part of his plan to increase Twitter's annual revenue by five times the current levels to $26.4 billion from the $5 billion last year. And can I just say, I'm, I'm so glad that finally the vulture, the soulless, vampiric capitalists are back in control. I'm sick of them trying to be good people. They're it's never like, good people. No, they're never... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the people controlling these are never good people. It's just like, look, can we just have the people who want to make money back in charge, please? You know where you stand? Yeah. It's easy enough. Exactly. I have money. Would you like that? Yes, there we are. Have a thing. It's a totally predictable transaction that doesn't require me to be part of a different religion. Um... So uh, he's basically going to try and cut the amount of, that Twitter relies on advertising uh, in order to have a subscription model to pay for tweets. I think he said he's only going to do this to governments yes. and big companies. So for normal yes. people, this will be fine. But I also just love the idea, like, yeah, government. Like, if you insist on having Twitter accounts, Gibbs. What's that? You're all addicted to Twitter. Mm. Every MP, every politician around the world, they can't help but post stuff and get that dopamine hit. Well, they can give me some money for it. But it's not just the MPs and whatnot either. It's every government department, every subcommittee well. of every department mm. as well. Like, there's an endless number of these pointless things that just sit around. And uh, yep. if I was him, yeah, I'd take the money. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and so th this is all good. Uh, and frankly, better than doing it for woke points. You know, at this point, I'm just, yeah, just, just make some money, Elon. Just don't care. Anyway, so uh, this has not been well received by the verified check marks who are addicted to, to, to Twitter. And I mean, there are lots of articles like this. The NPC programming is coming down from CNN, Washington Post, MSNBC. But we'll just use the Washington Post one because it was the funniest, frankly. Uh, with Elon Musk's looming takeover, the future of Twitter's content moderation is uncertain. Is it uncertain? Or is I, it technically, it's uncertain. But we know one thing. Which is that the leftists are not going to be happy with whatever he does. Yeah. Which would be good for everyone else, so... 
Well, apart from women and people of colour, apparently. Oh, no. Women and people of colour most affected. Yeah. It's almost like they've been an aristocratic class who you can't offend, and now that privilege is being taken away, and they're being treated the same like everyone else. Yes. So in this article, they're interviewing an expert, uh, one Mr. Kleinman, uh, and they say, if Elon Musk gets his way, what do you think Twitter will be like? And he says, the short answer is, we don't know. I mean, we actually could just look back to what Twitter used to be like. Fun. Trying to predict what Elon Musk is going to do is a dangerous game. That said, based on his comments to date, we are incredibly concerned that Twitter as a company will start paying a lot less attention to issues of hateful, abusive, and violent speech on the platform. There's no such thing as violent speech. It's definitionely impossible. I don't even know what hate hateful speech i don't even know what that is hate speech isn't real that's for sure yep i don't even know what hateful speech could possibly be i mean i agree that abusive speech could happen you know that's like it, at least something you could define abusive in law yeah. it is yeah, yeah. for example yeah. but uh, twitter already has a tremendous problem with the scale of hateful and abusive and violent speech on the platform especially directed at women and black and brown communities so elon will unleash the racism <laughs> it's gonna give everyone that n-word pass us back uh, so they ask, well, who's going to get, who gets harassed uh, most on Twitter? And Clemen says, well, in 2018, we did a study of 778 women who used the platform. So, what difference does that make? That doesn't explain anything. That's it. 700. But who cares? Like, you're saying, look, we're going to look at these people and give you an answer. Yeah, but that's not the question. The question is, who gets harassed the most? It's like, yeah, so we looked at one demographic. It's like, okay, but what about the rest of them? Because, I mean, like, there was a study a few years ago that showed that it was conservative MPs in this country out of all the politicians who get the most harassment on Twitter. So it's like, why did you... We, we looked at 778 women, and of those, it was the black and Latino ones who received, uh, quotes, uh, abusive or problematic tweets. Whereas the men received zero because we didn't ask any. Exactly. We didn't even bother having a look at them. It's like, that's weird. But, uh, and of course, quotes, black women are disproportionately targeted with 84% being more likely than white women to be mentioned in abusive or problematic tweets. By whom? Mentioned in a problematic tweet. A Washington Post investigation. <laughs> this is exactly, it's exactly this population, I think, stands to bear the brunt of any changes that Elon Musk makes. Yeah, well, they're not wrong, really. Any change that Elon Musk makes, it is going to affect women of color first. Such as Vijaya Gad. She is the first. Uh, she is worth a staggering amount of money. I didn't know this. So apparently, Bloomberg said in 2014, she earned $451,000 because she sold 13,000 of her shares at $33 a share. Uh, currently, she holds 848,000 shares. So that's why she was in that call with Joe Rogan. That's why she oh. was in the call. She's also the head of the trust and safety team, of course. Sorry, chief legal and officer and secretary, but uh, the, the person... Censor in chief. Yes, the chief censor at Twitter. Uh, and so her net worth is projected to be in excess of $30 million. And she makes, or bef previously made until last year, nearly $8 million a year as their chief legal officer and secretary. What's that, salary? In salary. She is the highest paid person at Twitter. And then, it turned out this year, she got basically double the salary. Isn't that weird? We get to the next one. As the Times of India reports, uh, she earned 7 million, uh, 17 million last year as Twitter's top legal counsel. God damn. $17 million a year. Worth every dollar. To be the chief censor at Twitter. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, the lady who's responsible for making their name mud for the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story just doubles her salary. Yes. I mean, that's a reward, isn't it? Yeah. It's wild. I, I had no idea that she was on so much money. And the thing is, uh, they, as they say, you know, she could be on the chopping block as Musk is reportedly planning to slash jobs and reduce executive pay. Uh, yeah, good. And that would be decent. Uh, but she's going to receive $12.5 million as a severance package. So she's going to end up with like $50, $60 million. And then if she sells her 800,000 shares, she's probably going to end up like a billionaire <laughs> for censoring people on the internet. Nice work if you can get it. <sighs> there is no justice, but I suppose at least she's gone. It took a lot of money. But. Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? It's like it took the richest man in the world to get rid of her, and she's going to just, on this unbelievably platinum parachute, 
go into some, and we'll see her pop up again somewhere else. Well, we saw her there with the president of India or prime minister. I forget which one they have. Yeah. Uh, although I wonder if she'll actually move back to India or if she'll just continue to live in the United States as well. Apparently she was uh, born in Hyderabad. So she's not like a native American. So maybe, maybe she'll go over to India and start censoring Indians. <laughs> Sorry, bros. <laughs> You're going to have to have her back. And she's like, right, I'm going to censor all of you now. Destroy Indians with the car dealer, please. No. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, but anyway, so in, uh, in other news, uh, there was uh, a lawsuit launched to delay or prevent the takeover of Elon Musk by Florida Pension Fund. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, motivated by dear concerns for business and procedure. Yeah, but the, the procedure is kind of weird, right? Let's go through it. So uh, this was challenged by a, the Orlando Police Pension Fund. I'm, I'm, uh, we, we all knew they were going to sue. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing to you from the Orlando Police Department's pension fund. We're very concerned. So we filed a lawsuit in Delaware Chancery Court. Okay, police fund from Orlando. You've gone over to Delaware, which has got nothing to do with the Californian business. It's like, what are you doing? Like, how can you make this look like this isn't just a political maneuver from people who are obviously on Twitter way too much? All right, so uh, according to the complaint, uh, the the problems is that Musk had other ag agreements with other ma uh, agreements with other major Twitter shareholders, including Jack Dorsey, to rely on their holdings when offering to take the company private last month. These arrangements triggered a Delaware law that calls for a three year delay in closing such deals. But why would the Californian businesses be beholden to Delaware laws? Wait, do they register their official address in Delaware for it tax reasons? It might well be because Delaware is a weird tax haven. This is Joe Biden's constituency as well. It and is. He brags about this. Yes. Uh, yes. High taxes for everyone else except where I live. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, and so I don't know that it will or won't go through or anything like this. Uh, but under Delaware corporate law, those agreements uh, make Musk an interested shareholder who has to wait at least three years to close the deal or win the support of investors who control at least two thirds of Twitter's outstanding voting stock. Uh, and so who knows if this is going to be legit? Because it could be that Twitter is actually registered in Delaware. I'm afraid I don't know. But um, but one interesting thing that has appeared from this is that Elon Musk tweeting about this. He's been drawing the support of, um, is it the second richest man, Jeff Bezos, on Twitter? Weirdly. If you can go to the next one, uh, you can see that uh, Elon Musk has been tweeting out things. And Jeff Bezos has been liking his tweets about the left going... For, if you can get the second one up, you see that's the things Jeff Bezos has liked on Twitter. He's only liked seven things. And one of them is Elon Musk's tweet about, oh, ever, the, the far left has gone really far left. Uh, and so there are people who are like, well, hang on a second. This is make the two richest men in the world like right-wing populists. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't that good? Isn't that a surprise as well? I mean, I mean you you'd wish Bezos would do more with it. And yeah. uh, instead of buying the Washington Post and then allowing them to continue being leftists, if he is. I mean, if you want to gut the Washington Post and turn it into, like, you know, something I would run, then feel free. You know, that would be great. Uh, but anyway, so th there are other things that have been occurring around this. I'll just include at the end. Uh, Project Veritas are apparently planning uh, some expose on Twitter, which, I mean, good. Project Veritas have done great work so far. Looking forward to it. This was really funny, though, because this is a Twitter executive. Uh, they don't tell us which one, uh, but James O'Keefe door stops him, and the guy just starts running. <laughs> so James O'Keefe starts running. Up like, you emailed us this. Could we talk about it? And he's just, no, I don't want to talk right away. It's like, dude, <laughs> I don't know who he is. I don't know what, uh, what he is. I'm innocent, damn it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the faster I run, the more innocent I am. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, moving on, uh, just to, again, to just to cap off a bunch of things that have happened. Although I am uh, interested with that Project Veritas thing because they've still got contacts inside and as the thing slowly yeah. burns, and a few of those people probably are going to lose their jobs in the catch up there. Oh, yeah. They're going to they're gonna leak everything. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. That's so, going to be good. Yeah, more, more fun things are on the horizon with Twitter, unfortunately, than I have. Yes. Uh, and just one last thing. Uh, Elon Musk apparently got into a Twitter spat with Russia's space agency. Yeah, he's been doing that a lot. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Russia's space agency uh, is accusing him of arming Nazis, basically. Mm. Uh, we, so if you can go down, there's a Elon's replied to this with a, an English translation. Uh, where they're saying, well, look, he sent them Starlink satellite uh, terminals, uh, and these have gone to the Azov Battalion, which they probably have done. Uh, and so he is uh, supporting Nazis. And Elon tweeted this out going, the word Nazi doesn't mean what they seem to think it does. It's like, eh. 
Unfortunately, in this case, it actually does mean what they think it does. Not that I'm saying that, you know, there aren't Nazis in Russia or the Russians are the good guys. The Russian like state has been a bit of a meme, calling everything they don't like a Nazi. But <laughs> in this case, they were accidentally right. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> which is the weird inverse of our state, where they call everything a Nazi, except for the Azov Battalion, yeah. uh, which is weird. Um, but... Um, and so afterwards, he, he po- uh, an hour later, he posted this joke tweet that uh, everyone's like, oh, what does this mean? If you can go to it, John. Uh, if I die in a mysterious circumstances, it's been nice knowing you. Um, so I assume that's in response to the um, Russian space agency. We don't know. Or but, to Clinton. Or- <laughs> but it could be to Clinton. Yeah, who knows? You know, it's very uh, you know cryptic. Um, but he did follow up his other tweet with another response a few hours later saying, quote, there are no angels in war. As in, he, he's been like, oh yeah, they're just calling everything Nazis. It's like, yeah, these are the actual yeah, Nazis. Yeah, someone's there. probably told him, hey, mate. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I can't imagine he heaps up with the daily occurrences. No, he's oh. probably a bit too busy. No. Um, but uh, yeah, the, these are the actual Nazis, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, that was just a bit, a bit of a roundup at the end there of what Elon Musk has been getting up to. But uh, there's more exciting things to come with his purchase of Twitter, I think. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium video, The Politics of Taxi Driver, that Thomas and Josh did together. If you want to follow Thomas, you can also follow him on Getter at, at Thomas Dowling on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.